Good morning. I'm News Director Jenna Clay, and joining me for today's People and Perspectives is Amy Wolf. Thank you so much for being here today, Amy. Thank you so much for having me. And today we are talking about DIPG, which is a form of cancer. It's a rare, inoperable brain tumor that affects almost children exclusively, and it claimed the life of your nephew, Hudson. So first, let me just say how deeply sorry I am for your loss, because I, no one should have to bury a child. That's, that's awful. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about Hudson? What kind of kid was he? Oh my, Hudson was the kind of kid that could make anybody laugh with just his laugh alone. His laugh was the most contagious laugh that I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What was he into? What did he like to do with his time? Um, he loved video games, loved to play Mario Kart. Um, he loved his Nintendo. Um, he loved to play with his dogs and his cat. Oh, and how old was he when he passed away? He was eight. Eight. Gosh, that's so young. So how did you guys know that he was even suffering from this condition? Um, he actually was um, fine and healthy. And then one day, um, my sister-in-law had noticed that his eye was, his right eye had turned in and he um, actually started drooling. Um, and so he um, was having difficulty speaking and difficulty swallowing. So they took him to the doctors and the doctor said, you need to go see a neurosurgeon, a neurologist right now. And they did a scan and that's when they found the tumor. He went from perfectly healthy one day to, it was like a light switch. And I understand that it's a fairly quick um, death or fairly quick process yeah going once through. once they're diagnosed the prognosis is nine to 12 months and he was uh eight months is how long he had it so what was the family's reaction i mean when you first hear i mean you know this is an eight-year-old child you don't expect something like this oh complete devastation heartbreak completely what was your first reaction? Was it to go online and research what this was? Or I mean, what, how did you guys move forward? That's, that's what I did and kind of wish I hadn't done it because when you do read about it, there's basically a less than 1% survival rate. So when you do look it up, it's, you know, the odds are against you, but we never once ever lost hope. I think that's an important part of it to have that hope. Yeah. Even yeah. when you see, you know, because we all do, we go right to WebMD and it's always seems like the worst, but in this case, unfortunately, it absolutely was. But if you don't have that hope, what do you have, right? Yeah, yeah. So you guys now are trying to raise awareness and keep his memory alive. Yes, um, we're doing that by doing a memorial ride for him every year. And this is our third year of doing it. And um, we're the, we've, Four Diamonds is the one that we donate the money to from the ride. Um, last year, we gave money to the 4-Aid and Strong Foundation, which also gives money to children with the IPG. Um, the gentleman that started 4-Aid and Strong Foundation, Bill Kohler, is also from York County, and his son, Aiden Kohler, also passed away from DIPG before Hudson did. So that's how you two kind of, or the two organizations kind of came together? Yes. And tell us a little more about this ride. This is the third year for it, right? This is the third year. Um, the Red Lion Elks and the Red Lion Legion Riders all come together and they came to us and said, hey, we want to do a benefit ride in Hudson. Tell us about them. And I went in and told them about them and they were like, yeah, we're definitely doing a ride. <laughs> and and um, our first year we made two thousand six hundred forty dollars for four diamonds and last year for the four and strong foundation where he raised four thousand four hundred thirty six dollars we had over a hundred riders last year it was That's, awesome that is awesome i mean you doubled it just in the yes. second year so do you have yes. a goal for this year um you know when we got together i don't think we actually had set a goal because um there's family that are helping plan this ride and then we get together with the elks riders and the legion riders and 
And, you know, I, I don't recall when we had any meetings that's even set a goal. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to see all these people come out in Hudson's memory? Oh, it's amazing. I remember riding on the back of my husband's motorcycle last year and it's, it's neat. They let the family kind of go first and I just turned around and was overwhelmed by the amount of riders that were riding and it, I, of course, is bawling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how you wouldn't be. I mean, this, I mean, the yeah. whole, it's a very emotional event and an emotional story. And um, I'm yeah. sure when you're going through this at the time, you don't imagine yourself years down the road, you know, doing something like this. So why did you decide to, to use this form of expression to remember Hudson? Um, well, like I said, I actually, um, I have a girlfriend that I went to high school with and her husband's part of the Legion Riders. And she came to me, well, she actually just came to her husband's funeral because we're friends. And she came to me and said, hey, look, we want to do a ride for, for Hudson. And I said, we're all in, let's go. <laughs> you know, so we've been having meetings every year and getting bigger and bigger. And I know this year you guys were having some trouble getting some, some momentum going with this ride. I know that, you know, I was actually ta uh, tagged on a social media post from um, someone who was just saying that they weren't getting a lot of exposure. And I know obviously this is a, not a normal year. 2020 has gone crazy and people have a lot going on. So what would you say to them to, to help them realize, you know, there are important things like this going on that they need to pay attention to? Well, nobody thinks that something like this will affect you until it does. So raising awareness is, is, a huge part of this other than his memory it's raising awareness for the ipg and just educating people on what it is and what it's about because there is four four boys in your county that have passed away from this rare disease yeah that seems like a lot and yeah you're saying raise awareness i had to google it i had no idea what dipg yeah. was i yeah. mean do you guys have any idea even about it before hudson was diagnosed with it I had saw stuff on the internet about um, Aiden Kohler, so I was aware of it, but you know, just you, you read about it and you think, well, that's not going to happen to anybody in my family. You know, it's rare and, you know, but it did, it did, and it could happen to anyone's family. It doesn't discriminate. Yeah, I know that I saw that it, um, that not much has changed as far as treatment for it either. They said that that diagnosis for someone who gets it now is the same as it was 40 years ago. I mean, yes. Is that, do you think that's because there isn't a lot of awareness or publicity about it? So not a lot of research maybe is going well, into it? That and there's not a lot of money that goes toward childhood cancer, period. And then the amount that goes to that, DIPG gets less than gets about $500 per kid for research and there is no cure and they at this point don't even know what causes it. That's, that's awful to think about. What was Hudson like during that time when after he was diagnosed? I mean what I mean he hopefully had that hope. What was what was his what was, what was it like for him? He was so brave and strong, stronger than anybody I've ever seen, and didn't let anything bother him. He was his, still his same goofy, loving self, and I mean, it did not change who he was at all. He was still awesome <laughs> and friendly and smiley and laughed. The, the laugh is... I, I will always go back to the laugh. He had the best laugh. Did he like motorcycles? He did, yes. So he would like, yes. he would like this. Yes, yes. <laughs> and and um, well, he has a bench at Slegel Park that was placed there in West York where he grew up. And so we, um, we stopped there. That's one of our stops on the ride is, you know, we stop at his bench. Oh, I love that. Where can people get more information about this ride so they can find out all the details and register? Um, well, they can register on the day of the ride. Um, registration starts at 10 a.m. Um, and it's at Freedom Biker Church. And that's 2550 Pine Grove Road, York, PA, 17403. And then we, the ride kicks off at 1230. And that's on September 12th, so coming up yeah. soon. 
very soon. Yes. What else and, would you go ahead? Well, I was going to say, um, after the ride, we're ending the ride also at Freedom Biker Church and we'll, there's going to be, um, a live band and food and raffles and door prizes also. Oh, I love that kind of, you know, end on a, on a happy note. I like that. Yep. yep. Is there anything else that you want to add that we haven't already talked about either about the disease or about Hudson? Um, well, I mean, I could tell you a little bit about the treatment that they tried. Um, sure. Like when he was first diagnosed, they did um, six weeks of radiation because they don't do chemo because chemo can't pass the blood brain barrier to get to the tumor. So the only thing they do is six weeks of radiation and they, what they try to do is actually just shrink the tumor so that, um, you know, you can kind of have what they call like a honeymoon period where some of the symptoms go away. And okay. unfortunately, that did not happen for him after, and he had a total of 30 radiation treatments. Um, what what and, was he like after those? Was he worn down? Was he upset or what? I mean, how he that was a him? he was a trooper. He was a trooper. Uh, he was so tough and so brave, and went and had those radiation treatments, you know, and was wonderful. Um, and when he finished the radiation, um, they went on a make a wish trip to Legoland in Florida nice. with his mom, dad, and brother <laughs> and sister. They all went. And then um, after that, they actually applied for a clinical trial in New York and he, he got accepted to that. And then after he went and had the clinical trial, um, things kind of went downhill from there. It didn't kind of go the way the family was hoping it would go with the clinical trial. And he ended up not being able to walk anymore after that. And how, how long was he like that? Um, he had the procedure May 25th. He was diagnosed January 13th and then had the procedure May 25th and then passed away September 5th. Oh, sorry again. Um, do you think that his bravery and the way he was during all of this helped you guys get through it after he passed? Oh, definitely. He, he definitely had a positive outcome or not, I shouldn't say outcome, outlook. Yeah. You know, and, and even with the odds, you know, we never, ever lost hope. That's a, I mean, that's a good message to, to pass on is hope, just hope, I hope. guess. And hope yep. for more awareness and hope for a treatment and hope for some more money to go towards finding some kind of help for people with DIPG or kids, I guess, which is what you're doing with this ride. So again, tell, tell us one more time, a website or in, where we can get more information on it. Um, they, can, they can look on Facebook. There's a, a thing, a Facebook, um, it would just say the third annual Hudson Memorial Ride and Social, if you would go look that up on Facebook. Perfect. All right. Anything else that you wanted to add? Um, well, one thing I wanted to say about the DIPG is mm -hmm. as a tumor grows, like just to give you a little more idea, um, they, they do lose their ability to talk and walk and even swallow. Mm -hmm. But the sad thing about it is they don't lose their cognitive ability of the brain. So as they decline, the children are fully aware of what's happening and there's nothing they can do about it. So that's, I think the hardest part was, you know, when he was going downhill and he couldn't even speak, he knew what was happening, but he couldn't even voice what was happening, but he's fully aware of what was happening. Oh, yeah, I, I, you, you have to have so much strength to watch him go through that. And, and I, I commend all of you for having that strength. Cause I know you have to try to, you know, hold it together when you're with him, seeing him like that, but I'm sure you would go home and just break down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh. Well, I, I hope that this, um, hopefully can, can inspire people to even maybe donate if they can't attend this event and, and maybe look it up and, and see what's going on with it and find other ways to maybe donate or make awareness for other in other ways. So Amy, I appreciate you talking with us this morning and I hope that your ride goes really well and I hope that you'll keep in touch with us and, and let us know about any more events you have coming up. Thank you very much.